everyone, I'm Edita Sitar from Laundry Basket Quilts. Welcome to Quilting Window. I am so thankful you took the time and wanted to quilt with me. Today I want to share with you one of my favorite blocks. It comes from this quilt called Lollipop and it's just as dressed and blade uh, block. This block is 9 inch finish and it has 15 low blades in it. I used the tiny little template to cut my pieces and I can't wait to show you how I made one of the blocks for this cute little quilt. You wonder what fabrics are in this quilt right here. Those are from one of the first collections I ever designed, one of the batik collections that I designed for Moda. I absolutely love this quilt and reminds me of just that perfect treat of watercolors that are in those beautiful beautiful batiks. In our quilting basket today we have some nice goodies. I created a kit that is similar to that original quilt. It has 15 different beautiful batiks already pre-cut for you, three and a half inches, so you just have to use a template to cut the pieces. It has a little yellow that is gonna be perfect for the accent in the center, and two pieces of fabric that are gonna be used for the background of your blocks and setting triangles. In the basket, we also have a cute little pattern called Lollipop. In the pattern, you have a step-by-step -step direction for everything that we're going to do it today. I love using this 2370, this Aurifil thread, weight 50. It's perfect. It's going to hide in the seams beautiful my blocks that i'm going to be working on it on my table today i use the lighter thread because i want you to see the stitch if i would use this color you would not be able to see the stitches and i want you to see the detail on it what else do i have in my cute little basket i do have that cute little template that's the lollipop template right here this one still has the paper on in a package I keep the paper on uh, to I open the package and start cutting. If I want to see through the template, then I peel the paper away. I have our favorite pins, patchwork pins, and I included a few things for hand piecing and hand stitching today because I thought maybe some of you have extra time, sit on a porch and wanted to hand stitch some of the pieces. So uh, hand stitch needles right there. I'm gonna applicate by hand my blades to the background. Oh, don't you love this? This is a needle threader. If you have a problem seeing that hole in a needle, this is perfect for you. You're gonna need a little thimble. And if you would like to, you can use a glue to secure your pieces in place before you applicate. You're gonna see me using all of those things during the time as I'm showing you how to make a block. Your basket is full of new goodies. I'm so excited for you. Let's go ahead and start making our blocks. If you're using your own fabrics, just pre-cut your pieces to three and a half inch strips or you can take this little template and put it on any of leftovers and cut those shapes. If I have a strips, I'm going to place my template just like this. I'm going to consider this a top and the bottom of my play, uh, templates. Those are the sides. I'm gonna place it right over and notice my template, I peeled that paper off so I can see it really nice. If there would be a little flower, I would wanna center it up maybe. And what I'm going to do, using my rotary, I'm going to cut it just like this. I have my cute little board that turns for me. So look at it. I turn this all the way around and now I can go ahead, place my hand right over the template, keeping my fingers away from that blade <clears throat> and I cut my pieces. I layer four to six layers of fabric, one on the top of the other. I always press my fabric before I cut my strips and I like to go ahead and use best press when I prep my fabric. In no time, I will be cutting multiple beautiful pieces that I can use it in my block. In the kit that I prepare, I have prepared a beautiful fabrics that are in a rainbow arrangement and I already cut them, separate them and they're laying right in front of me because I'm excited about sewing those in 
cute little blades together. You can go ahead and start by hand or by machine and if you're doing it by hand you will fold them right sides together you start right here and you just stitch in and out in and out stitch it i use my sewing machine to sew mine and i call this a chain sewing why chain sewing because i have all my plates kind of hooked together remember when you do chain sewing stitch do three four stitches in between stitch the next one three four stitches in between so that way when it's time to cut the pieces apart you have a little bit of a room to do it and that's the next step that we going to do I have already started so those are my pieces I'm gonna grab my scissors I'm gonna cut those apart just like this nice and clip them then I'm gonna go ahead grab each of my blades and gently trim a sliver do you see how much I trimmed it I stay one eight away from the seam one eight away trimmed it and I go ahead and do a next one when I do something I repeat it over and over and over again so that way I get good in trimming clipping flipping because those are the steps that we're going to take so as soon as you trim you're gonna go ahead push this seam flip it up and next one one, push this seam flip it up and next one push this seam flip it up uh, over right side up and notice it I'm not taking my fingers and pushing on that cute little point no when I need to push my point I'm gonna use a tiny little stiletto and you can get that in the grocery store or you can use a really nice stiletto in your sewing room and you can go ahead look at how I position my stiletto next to the seam right here just like that and I'm gonna go ahead push it nice just like that all the fabric is turned right side up now next one go ahead put my stiletto in push it really nice look at this 90 degrees right here push it really nice and I stack them like this one inside the other waiting that I'm going to go to my ironing board where at my ironing board I'm going to go ahead and press them really nice so once I turn over the whole set of 15 of those it is time to go to my ironing board where I can go ahead and now center the seam and press it. What I like to do is when I press, I gently crease it with my finger, then I look at where the seam is, match it up with my crease, I put finger on each side, press it with my iron from the back, beautiful one, look at another one, another one and keep going like this till I get 15 of those because I need 15 for one beautiful block as soon as I press it I take my blades I position them right sides together and very important match this point match this side and match this edge right here with a beautiful sharp macrotex needle you're now familiar with those and I use size 70 sharp and our orofill thread weight 50 I would stitch from the top straight down or you can hand stitch right here and I would sew one another one and another one and create a cute little sets of two do you see as soon as I finish I will open the seam in the back and press it beautifully please remember when you sewing the sets leave a little thread in the beginning and the end so that way your pieces don't come apart you just want a nice stitches I don't back stitch here to lock it because I don't want to build up extra bulk I just leave a little bit of a thread and that way I can tuck the thread under there and I have a beautiful set of two set of two look at another one set of two I'm gonna finger press this I would have done this with an iron right here but for now I'm gonna just finger press it look two sets of two I'm gonna go ahead place those right sides together 
and stitch. And a little advice, when I do my blades, I lined up a whole plate, I put all my fabric exactly what I wanted. Now it's the time to design a beautiful dress then plate. And I go ahead and sew twos, lay them back up, sew two sets of four, lay it back up. And notice this has 15 points, so it's gonna be three sets of four and one set of three to get the 15. Why add number? Because it just makes it a fun and exciting and I don't have to center things up. And this design comes from an antique quilt that grandma made it. So I went ahead and used that same cute little, she had a paper template. I used an acrylic template and followed that same design that has been a part of Sitter family tradition for so many years and enjoy it. So right there, I would have been keep going, keep going to I achieve the most beautiful little dress and plate. Look at this. Isn't that lovely? And coincident, it fits exactly in the circle of my board. So I know it lays nice and flat and wonderful. And now it's time to applique to a background. I cut a beautiful background square. The direction for cutting are in the pattern. And if you want it, you can cut your background a little bit bigger. I cut it exactly to the size. I'm using a batik, so I know it's not gonna fray the edges too much. Many times we cut it a little bit bigger because as we work on it the edges fray so we don't want that to happen this one i'm just know it's a good quality fabric from our company andover that i'm so proud to design for i'm gonna make an x right there crease a little x that is gonna give me the center right there and now i can position my little blades right there dressed and played centered up and notice how the points sometimes we had lines to match the points this time this is gonna be matching a point matching a seam do you see what i'm doing all right there so i know i centered up here Perfect, and uh, now we're gonna go ahead and applique. And I'm so excited, oh, there it is, my fancy glue. I really like that one, and I just got a new refill for this glue. So what I'm going to do is, with a touch of glue, I'm going to tack it down and hold it in place and start daydreaming. Am I gonna do this by hand or if I'm gonna do it by machine? The quilt that I showed you right at the beginning of our video was all done by machine. So I use a invisible thread, nylon invisible thread on the top, and I use a cotton thread in a bobbin. And with a small zigzag, I went around the edges and applique by machine. Then I create a circle for the center and I also applicate that by machine. But you know, lately I have been having a little bit extra time, you know, with shelter in place, we're not going too far away. So I have been playing and doing things a little bit more by hand. And today I wanna share with you how I would do this block by hand. So I would go ahead, um, did you notice how I attach to the background? And you could use our pins and pin it in every single blade. I didn't do the pins because sometimes when I hold it and hand applique, I squeeze it too hard and I pin my hands. So I don't want to do that. I go ahead and use the glue. That glue will disappear later on. It's not gonna stay there forever. And now I need a little center circle, a little sunshine for the center. Let me show you how I made that one. So what I did is I opened my pattern. In the pattern, my template B is the circle. And a coincident, I have a little plastic acrylic template for the circle that I can use it. Uh, this one is uh, maybe 116 bigger, but it's one of my favorite circles that I ever work with it. It's the same circle I use for my pillow. So why not, why not use it? If you want it for one, you can just go ahead, take a freezer paper, put it over the pattern and draw it. If you have to make 40 or 12, you want a little template, you can find a little a something in, in your kitchen that is the same size or use this circle to draw it. 
and I'm drawing to a freezer paper. Then with my scissors, I'm gonna very smooth cut, cut out my circle right out and look at that smooth long cuts I'm taking. Very important because if the edges of your paper are a little bit, you know, have little bumps on it, it's going to reflect on the edges of your fabric circle that you're gonna wrap it around it. So you want your edges as smooth, as beautiful as you can get it. And I'm gonna use this freezer paper to then place it on the back of my fabric, shiny side down towards my fabric. I will press this, cut it quarter inch bigger, and now, uh, I would go with my thread in and out and pull. I have already prepared one for you. Look at this. So I had a circle right in there. It's pressed down and I gather with my thread edges of the fabric and I pull it really nice. Look how beautiful this look. And now I can tuck those threads under there and secure it in place right here with a tiny bit of a glue. And now I can go ahead and machine stitch all stitch it by hand and you of course want to see the one that I'm stitching by hand I can tell oh don't be surprised there's some funky fabric in this block this one I'm using this as my inspiration and then I dive into my stash of all my leftover scraps. And I tell you, with this cute little template, I was able to cut up just about anything that I was hiding and saving. <clears throat> and look at all those cute little fabrics. I'm mixing batiks, uh, modern, modern, traditional, reproduction, something new, something old, something with a little bit of a print on it, nice little flower, everything perfectly fits together. I lined it up in a little rainbow arrangement and now I go ahead. I'm using an embroidered needle or a fill thread and with a gentle loose stitches. Notice how I gently squeeze right here. I'm gonna put a little stitch one at a time as I have time and I will be working on those beautiful blocks and applique by hand one little stitch at a time i tell you this project would be wonderful for a little girl of if you have a little um, granddaughter or little friend that you want to surprise with something beautiful i just want to bring to your attention as i'm coming to the points i'm gonna put two stitches and why because most likely those gonna be uh have a lot of use you know so as my quilt i'm gonna machine quilt or hand quilt um with time this is gonna be the most wear and tear on those points so you want to make sure you put a two nice stitches through those points so they're hold it nice in place they don't go anywhere and look at how nice this beautiful 2370 just disappear in the seam. Notice it how I'm taking this and I'm gently squeezing and coming from the back and picking a little bit of the background and a little bit of that edge right here. Super. Oh, this is really relaxing, especially when you're sitting in your uh, favorite chair with my puppy Oliver next to me. This is just wonderful and watching one of my favorite movies. What is your favorite movie? Um, I love to hear from you. So I just love watching a little bit of the older shows. We just watched Pretty Woman, by the way. Um, it was so much fun to, to watch that show and just stitch one stitch at a time. Oh, so wonderful. All right, great. So you keep going that way. Let me show you from the back. Notice those little stitches, really nice. You want them to be as straight as possible. I guess I have to do a little bit more practice on that. You know, you never stop. So right there and keeping this in place. Then as soon as I would finish going around, I would go ahead, grab my lovely circle, put it in the center and also stitch by hand. For the circle, because I'm using such a happy bright yellow, I would match yellow thread to it. It will hide. So I think you now know what to do. As soon as I finish my block, I will square it up and 
included in my beautiful quilt. And guess what? If you can make one, you can make a dozen and you can keep going and create a beautiful, beautiful quilt. I can tell you're excited at my scraps and you want to take a little peek at indeed what I'm up to. So I most likely will never show this to anyone, but today I feel like I can show you my crazy little scraps. So notice it, this is what I'm working from. And this is some of the blades that I have been turning over and creating just the most fun scrappy quilt. And as you can tell, everything is in here. Oh, and this is one of our newest collection, Olive Branch, that is coming out next month. I'm excited for that one. So something new, something old, some few favorites. So I will be applicating my blocks and enjoying them. And I hope you enjoy yours as well. I hope you have a great time. A little hand stitching, it really gives you that perfect time to reflect, relax, and enjoy it. It was so much fun to quilt with you guys. So if you have any requests for videos, please leave us comments below. I'm so looking forward to hearing from you. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website at laundrybasketquilts.com where you can find a lot of fun inspiration. And I am so excited that you took the time and quilt with me and I Look forward to quilt with you next week. Happy quilting!